I find it funny when Christians find, hang their hat on a fraud case, straight up fraud case. And dude, let me be clear. Yeah, I said I was going to make a video about your statement. I either forgot or because I've been on a cross country road trip, haven't had the time, but most likely I forgot. And more than likely I forgot because what you present has been debunked so many times, it's almost not even worth my time to do it right now. But I'll go ahead. You saying that you debunked this dude a while back anyways when you said that no one wrote about Jesus before the Bible. And soon as I mentioned the letter of Pilate to Rome about the crucifying Jesus, he was ghost and started ignoring my comments, said he would make a video. Yeah, I don't know when you wrote that, so I can't tell you exactly what was going on in my life. So if I said that, then I will offer you the apology of not getting a video out sooner. But don't 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 get so arrogant when you're talking about something that has been proven to be a fraud. And I'm going to give you most of the information, but I also want everybody to go out there and research this information for themselves. So what this gentleman is talking about is a letter that was supposedly discovered in Liverpool, England, that in the 1800s or uh, mid to early to mid 1800s that talks about the fact that Pontius Pilate wrote a letter to Emperor Tiberius about the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, in the very beginning of the of, of this process, there was already a bunch of problems. I cannot say the names correctly. Um, so I'm going to label them the American and the fake German. OK, so basically what you have, you have an American. His name is something like Mahan um, and Mahan was in Missouri. And while in Missouri, he met a guy and this guy name is Weissenbogen, Weissenbogen, something like that, the German. And the German was saying that, hey, did you know that the Vatican is holding this letter about Pilate? and him writing to Tiberius about the crucifixion of Jesus, and I can get you a copy of it. So, Manham, who was a priest, I believe, was like, yeah, let me get that. But no, he may not have been the priest, but he was like, just, yeah, let me get that. So, the German goes back and then tells the guy, I need about $62 and some change in order to get this to you. He's like, okay, he sends the $62. I know, I know today's time, $62 ain't nothing. But back in the early, mid-1800s, well, the, this is around the late 1800s. Well, no, the early, mid-1800s, that was a lot of money. So he sends these $62. He gets the $62, and then he sends it, and he says that he needs $62 in a coinage. Uh, shoot, I can't remember what the coinage would call, but when you guys look it up, you'll find it. The coinage was a type of coinage that is not even used anymore. <laughs> he said that he needed it in this in this coinage, and we don't, and they didn't even use it at that time frame. So let me not say any more now. But at that time frame, they didn't even use it. So it was odd right there from that they used that type of coinage. Then the fact is, is that he sent him these this letter. Now there are three, <laughs> and then in the later 1800s, this story hits the newspaper, but the letter changes and then it hits the newspaper in the early 1900s and the letter changes again. So first this pilot letter changes three, you know, it has three different copies of this letter. So those things right there already throw up a red flag that what you basically have was a guy saying that I know a guy, but here's the interesting part. Another interesting part, the guy Manham also published other documentations that were Christian related that have been proven to be forgeries and have sold books after books after books in these pamphlet form in order to do that. So in order, in, in order to make a living up. So Mannheim himself and this, and the German seem to be uh, fake. They seem to be fraud, um, fraud scammers. And then later you find out that the, the, the German, that person never actually existed. The people he say he worked with at the po at the uh, at the Vatican never existed, and the name itself is a providence in Germany and not a. It, at that time frame, back in the day, it was a providence of Germany and not anyone's surname is not even utilized as a surname in Germany. 
So there's a lot of scammy things going on with this letter just from the beginning of how it came to the public view. Now, the letter itself demonstrates somebody who does not understanding understand Roman culture at the time of Pilate. Now, I was and still am an avid student of the Roman culture because so many things in today's world uh, come from it. But this letter first starts out with, and, and the letter is very anti-Semitic if you really look at it. It first starts out talking about how Pilate heard about Jesus and that Jesus was this, had this golden blonde hair and he had these blue eyes in one version, gray eyes in another version, and he was so handsome and looked like, and was Herculean in his looks and in his body. Another letter says that he was, you know, small, thin frame, but that he was Herculean and he was so pleasant to look at and he was so beautiful. Now, this is when uh, a mindset that is, it's a Greeked up God mindset because Greek gods are made to be beautiful. Now, if you got a beautiful healing, feeding people, mirrors, you know, calm demeanor guy, yeah, that would work. But Isaiah 52, I believe, or 53, says that Jesus just, you're, the Messiah was going to be a common looking dude, nothing special, nothing to look at. But of course, the European mindset of Greek, the Greek, the Hellenization of the, of the European mind says that you must make your gods look beautiful. Right. Even but and that's not even just something from the Hellenistics. The Kemetic used to do that until Akhenaten. Akhenaten was like, no, nah, paint me like I am. Don't paint me looking all Herculean and like I'm the, I'm the shit. But this is what they did. So, first of all, the description of Jesus in there is this beautiful guy. And then it says in there's a slight little line. It says not with the dark black beards and tawny looks of the followers, the people who were listening, basically saying that, you know, the brown skin Semitic people, you know, is throwing shade at them. And he said that he would, that Pilate talked to him and it was so nice and they had such a good time talking and all this sort of thing. And that Pilate had many conversations with this Jesus and that he was sorrowful. But it also states that Pilate was saying that he was trembling at the, you know, when he met Jesus, he was afraid of the majesty and that sort of thing. All things that Pilate, Pilate was known to be a ruthless asshole. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why Pilate was about to get disposed of, it had nothing to do with Jesus, but which is another fake letter that Mannheim, fake pamphlet Mannheim put out, but that he was getting disposed of because he was so cruel in putting down a Sumerian um, revolt. But Pilate wasn't that guy. Pilate was one of them, you know, F around and find out kind of people. So he was not trembling. He wouldn't have been trembling. Then the last part of it, is when he says that Pilate is saying in later that Jesus was the son of God to understand the Romans. Tiberius had already um, been declared the son of God. The coinage that they had at the time frame had of Tiberius that we can still find today says the son of God because his father had already been deified. So Tiberius was the son of God. If Pilate would have claimed that Jesus was the son of God, Pilate would have definitely already been submitting his own uh, death warrant. Pilate would have never called Jesus the son of God. That demonstrates uh, new writing. And then the, the, to smack it in the head, the linguistic, linguistic archaeology has determined that the style of writing of this letter is no later than 11th century. Am I saying that right? That the oldest it could possibly be is 11th century. So the person who wrote it only knew Greek from the 11th century forward. That the oldest version of Greek they knew, 11th century. That it could not have been a first century Greek writing. Therefore, your document is a fraud. And when Christians hang your hat on fraudulent material like this, then all you're doing is hurting your cause. If you could have easily done the research on this, I guarantee all my people who follow me, go do the research on this. Ask good quality questions in your Google search. Like, you know, who wrote the letter? Pont the Pontius Pilate write a letter to Tiberius. Is it a fake? Is it fraud? Is it real? And go down the line. 
and you will be dismayed at how easy it is to find information on this. I guarantee 10, 15 minutes and you'll find tons of information. Just go.